The bitter dispute between Henry II and Thomas Becket, which culminated in the Archbishop's murder in Canterbury Cathedral, is one of the most infamous episodes in English history. Thomas Becket's life, death and legacy are nothing short of extraordinary. Thomas Becket was born in 1120. After starting his adult life as an accountant, Becket began his ecclesiastical career when he entered Archbishop Theobald's household in the winter of 1143 as a clerk. On Theobald's recommendation, Becket became Chancellor to King Henry II in 1154, marking the start of a close and personal friendship. However, 1162 was the turning point in Becket's relationship with the King as Henry's nominee Becket accepts the position of Archbishop of Canterbury. Becket's loyalties were now to the Church, and he became a strong voice of opposition to Henry's efforts to increase loyal jurisdiction. The King's anger erupted over the issue of clerical immunity, and Becket's refusal to sign the Constitutions of Clarendon in 1164 pushed their relationship to breaking point. and the dispute escalated, rolling onto the international stage. Becky's exile lasted for almost six years. The king and his archbishop stood firm to their principles and would not back down. Attempts at reconciliation were futile. The exact details of his murder were recorded by eyewitnesses. The murderers, under the false impression that they were doing the king's bidding, left Henry and France with the intention of arresting the Archbishop. Arriving at Canterbury Cathedral on the 29th of December, 1170, the four knights forced entry into the cathedral. Edward Grimm, a clerk visiting Canterbury, described the chaos that followed. The evil knights, fearing that he would be snatched by the people and escape alive, suddenly leapt on him and wounded God's sacrificial lamb in the head, cutting off the top of the crown. At the third blow, he bent his knees and elbows, offering himself as a living sacrifice, saying in a low voice, For the name of Jesus and the well-being of the church, I am prepared to embrace death. As he lay prostrate, the third knight inflicted a grave wound. With this blow, the sword was dashed on the pavement, and the crown, which was large, was separated from the head. A clerk who had come in with the knights then put his foot on the holy priest and precious martyr and, horrible to say, scattered the brains with the blood over the pavement. The 
sacred space of Canterbury Cathedral had been violated, the high altar despoiled, and the day of the holy innocents tainted with Thomas's blood. Old and young shook with fear as they heard that a new holy martyr lay in the church, dead upon the floor. Within days, the first miracles attributed to Beckett were being reported. By Thomas's merits, the blind saw, the deaf heard, the lame walked, and the dead were brought back to life. as a martyr of the church. With remarkable speed, Beckett was canonised by Pope Alexander III in 1173. Canterbury Cathedral subsequently became one of the most celebrated goals of European pilgrimage as rich and poor alike came along the Canterbury Road. Pilgrim souvenirs, such as waterfiles containing a diluted mix of the saint's blood, were dispersed. Canterbury bells and pilgrim badges were also produced and the cult surrounding Thomas Beckett intensified. The commercial success of the cult was truly incredible. In the 14th century, pilgrim offerings to the cathedral sometimes rose to £500 per annum. Reports of wonders not only reached the innermost and outermost corners of England, but also spread rapidly through many people of foreign races. It roused cities, towns, villages, and even huts everywhere in England to such an extent that from the lowliest up to the greatest, few remained who did not come to see and honour the tomb of the famous martyr. Beckett's turbulent life and death inspired generations of artists, scholars and writers alike. Geoffrey Chaucer probably visited Canterbury in around 1385, which provided the impetus for one of the great works of English literature. Chaucer's work is built around a pilgrimage to Canterbury Cathedral, which proves that Beckett Shrine was still a popular pilgrimage destination two centuries after his death. Thomas Beckett's enduring presence in medieval piety is indisputable. Palmers long to travel foreign strands, to distant shrines renowned in sundry lands, and specially from every shire's end, in England folks to Canterbury went. To seek the blissful martyr is their will, the one who gave such help when they were ill. Further, for the Becket cult declined in the 15th century, and the Archbishop Shrine was destroyed in the English Reformation. Yet Canterbury Cathedral continues to occupy a prominent place in our national heritage and history. Beckett's story has a powerful appeal even today, when crowds are still drawn to the site where the Archbishop's Shrine once stood. Without a doubt, Beckett's extraordinary life and death will continue to inspire art, literature and religious practice in the future. <laughs>